DJ ET here with you, about to hand the microphone, as it were, over to Rick Silva. Rick Silva is the creator of the One Referral Away Networking Home Study Course. He is one of the nation's foremost experts of business networking and referral generation. Rick's primary goal is to help business owners increase their income, work less, save money, play more, and invest more wisely. Mr. Silva, take it away. Thank you. Okay, now, everybody, here's my twist. I'm not going to teach you how to network. I'm going to teach you how to think. going to teach you how to think tonight. Seventeen years I've been studying networking. Get ready. Take some notes if you can. Number two, take your 10-gallon ego hat and put it next to you. Take the ego hat off and just for 13 and a half or 14 more minutes, say to yourself, I don't know anything about networking. Because if you're sitting here thinking you know everything about networking, then you're going to have a wall up and I'm not going to be able to teach you anything. Take the wall down for 15 minutes, you know nothing about networking and, and give me the spotlight, take the notes, listen, maybe just maybe you'll learn something, okay? So my name is Rick Silva. How not to offend everyone you come in contact with, how to get people to chase you instead of you chasing them. What to do and what not to do when trying to build your referral-based practice. Thanks for being here. My name is Rick Silva. Here's what we're gonna cover. I'm going fast, fast, fast. Side, side tip for you, the average person speaks 160 to 180 words a minute. I'm about 205 right now, but the average person can listen to 805 words a minute. I'm going to tell you who I am real quick, tell you what is networking. We're going to talk about the law of reciprocity. We're going to talk about when you should be selling and when not to sell. And a couple ideas on what you could do at events like this and other events. <gasps> All right. My name is Rick Silva again, former engineer with Eastman Kodak, and I was a recruiter with Cisco Systems. Was a multimillionaire at 29 years old, lost everything in the stock market and the dot-com crash when I was 29 years old. Had to build my life back up. For the last 17 years, I've been teaching business networking. I have two courses on networking that I've sold in five different countries. Uh, I run networking groups and I teach people how to do a proper elevator speech. Um, I'm also a rainmaker, meaning I bring in most of the business for my wife's real estate business. We help people invest in land. In 2008, I was bankrupt and homeless and not so much anymore. I've been honored to have over 6,000 one-on-one coffee meetings, which led to uh, being 40 pounds overweight and getting type 2 diabetes, which I had to cure, completely cured it from having all that coffee. I facilitated way over a thousand networking groups. So in February of 2008, I got divorced. It was February 12th. It was two days before Valentine's Day because I had ordered the flowers and we decided to get divorced. So she still got those flowers. Uh, moved out, got my own place, paid rent, child support, the whole thing. And then the economy really tanked and I went bankrupt. That's the Cadillac. That's not a picture of one like it. That's the actual Cadillac that was repossessed. That was my, my pride and joy at the time. They took it away on a flatbed truck. That's the office I lived in. So that's a Pleasant Tunnel Hotel, downtown Pleasanton. If you know where that is, it had some closets in there. I put my clothes in there, put everything I owned in storage. I slept on that exact futon, which is still in my house to this day. And I showered at the gym. I was homeless for seven months. It would take, it's, a, it's an hour long story. I got to teach you 17 years of networking in 13 minutes. So I'm going fast, cutting everything short. Then in 2010, oh boy, oh boy, I went from living on my couch to traveling the world. We've been to Tahiti three times. We've been all over the world eight times. That's on a cruise ship overlooking Santorini, baby. That's not snow-capped mountains. That's Greece, Santorini. Been around the world eight times. How did I do that? How did we do that? Those of you that are old enough, and there may be only two of you that aren't old enough, look at the screen because I became an e-ticket ride, baby. I was an e-ticket ride. Now, if you look at this real quick, for those of you old enough, Disneyland used to have A, B, C, D, E tickets. And the E ticket was for the best ride. And this is so old that um, there's a couple big time rides that aren't even on there. This is probably from the 70s or 80s or I don't even know, maybe the 60s. The E ticket ride was the best ride in town. So what I tried to do uh, when I went to networking events, and those of you who know Carol Marshall, you can ask her the story. I would go to networking events and there would be a line too wide six deep standing in line to meet me and that's because of what i did at the networking events 
that's a three hour class. I'll give you some ideas today. But you want to be something, you want to be someone people flock to, not go, oh, here he comes. Oh no, he's going to try to sell me his stuff. Ah, no. We've all gone to events and somebody's tried to sell us stuff. That's a salesperson, not a networker. Okay, what networking is not, what networking is not is telling people what you do. If you're at a networking event telling people what you do, you are not networking, you are marketing. Trying to sell your stuff to them, you're a salesperson. Handing out your business card, you're a marketer. Handing out flyers, you're a marketer. Meeting people face to face is not networking when your mouth is moving. Shaking hands and kissing babies is also not networking. Shaking hands can fall under it as long as you're not talking. That's the only one let you get away with shaking being part of networking. What networking is, is asking people what they do. Getting their business card and contact information, taking notes and following up with some information later. Asking who their perfect client is. When you show you care about them and you ask them who their perfect client is and you actually take notes on it. So again, you could do a follow-up email later showing you care. Referring service providers and power partners to them. If they're a CPA, I guarantee you they'd like to meet a financial planner. They'd like to meet a business attorney. If they're a real estate agent, I guarantee they'd like to meet a mortgage lender, okay? Sending them referrals where people are actually looking to do business with them right now, not sending them some caca leads. And there's a whole system I built teaching people how to send referrals. So let's talk about the law of reciprocity. Religions can't agree on anything. I think we can all agree that religions cannot agree on anything. They only agree on two. So in the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, the Bible, every religious writing in history world, Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, everybody, they only agree on two things, love and the belief in the law of reciprocity, that's it. So one of the definitions for the laws of reciprocity is on the bottom of the screen. One must pour cold water on the ground before he can tread on soft soil. It doesn't say, hey, my name's Rick and here's what I do, here's what I do. You want to buy, you want to buy, you want to buy, or you got any referrals for me? What you got, what you got, what you got? That's not networking. You got to give with no thought of return. Then you're networking. A couple other definitions. We're going to fly through this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. If you give nothing, you're going to get nothing. That's what it says. Heaven keeps accounts of the giving, and in the end, blessings will return to the giver. The more important part is the blessings will return to the giver. Look at the next line. Multiplied many fold. You got to give with no thought of return. Okay, so you got to give with no thought of return. I'm not going to read the last one because it's a little too long. I'm going to talk about the six foot puke factor. Almost all of you have been, if not all of you, have been to a networking event and somebody starts asking you questions in a way that you know the only road it's leading down is to them to try to sell you stuff. Somebody walks up to you and says, hey, do you have kids? My mind goes directly to life insurance. Doesn't make it good, doesn't make it bad. It's just, I have a feeling the person's asking me a question, leading me down a road to sell to them. So be authentic and ask questions showing you really care about the person, not that you're trying to sell to them. So the six foot puke factor is a lot of network marketing companies that will be re remain nameless teach you the puke factor. And that is when you're in a grocery store, when you're around your friends, when you're at an event, wherever you are, if they're within six feet of you, tell them what you do and try to recruit them. So if you can puke on them, you should be selling your stuff. That's what they teach. That's the only reason network marketing has such a bad rap is because their approach system is horrible. So I want you people to chase you and become an e-ticket ride. I don't want people running away from you. Always remember people don't care about you or what you do. People just naturally want to help you. They just don't want to be sold. So an example would be, I mean, an example, you, you go to the uh, car lot and you want to look at cars and you really want to buy a car. But when that guy opens the glass doors and he comes walking toward you, ah, I want to buy a car, but I don't want anybody to bother me. No, well, ultimately, sorry, you're going to have to buy the car, but we just, we don't want pressure. We just want to look, observe, let it grow on us. And then if we want to buy, we'll buy. We don't want people pushing us, especially at network events. Now I want to talk to you about using the word you and your. If you're asking somebody questions, 
Hey, DJ ET, what do you do? Hey, Jessica, what do you do? Then you have to use the word you. But if the word you and your has anything to do with me trying to guide you down a road to sell you my stuff, it's offensive. Using the word you and your in networking is offensive. I'm going to prove it to you. The day COVID hit, and I have no way to water this down. The day COVID hit, that two or three day stretch, Marcel and I made about $160,000 in those three days. So you don't know that. And the people that send me the messages I'm about to show you don't know that. And you shouldn't be pitching people you don't want anything about. These are direct uh, screenshots of pitches that came to me on Facebook. Hey, Rick, came across your profile and see you're in real estate and you're a business coach. With all this going on, we've had a lot of great success helping people like you pivot financially. Are you keeping your options open to make money in your other industries? Uh, no, because I've made three or four times more than the number I gave you this year. So uh, no, I'm not open. And the you and your, by the way, if somebody sends you an email or any kind of message and you is spelled with the letter U, I'm definitely not doing business with them. So you, are you keeping your options open? Uh, no. Here's another one. I answered a poll. Somebody said, how much coffee do you drink? I said, four cups a day. Rick, you need this in your life. Oh my God, four cups a day. It's skinny brew, black coffee, blah, blah, blah. Um, for increased energy, if you're intermittent fasting and living a keto lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. And we go, blah, 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 blah. For $20, you can get a three day set. Would you like to go ahead and snap? What? That you and your is offensive. I want to run from that. Rick, I was looking at your profile. These are all came in within 72 hours of COVID lockdown. Rick, I was looking at your profile and I see you're in real estate. I'm an entrepreneur. My company, I'm so happy you're an entrepreneur, by the way. I'm proud of you. We love working with smart, professional, quick people. That's not going to help put me on a pedestal because I know you're trying to sell me. That's why you're telling me I'm smart and professional. I know all the scripting. Quick question. Now that I'm so smart, quick question. Do you keep your options open in terms of making money outside of what you're currently doing in real estate? Anybody in real estate that's successful, the answer is no. We make too much money already and I don't want to diversify out. It's you, your, you, your. I don't even know these people and they're pitching me everything in the world. The word you and your if asked to make a sale is wrong unless you're trying to make a sale. So see this faucet? The guy on the left is the salesperson. The guy on the right is the networker. You go and you turn the sales faucet on. When somebody comes up to you and says, I, I know about you, I heard about you, hey, I wanna to talk to you about buying your services. Then and only then is it, here's what I can do for you. It helps you with this, you that, you that, you that. When you meet somebody in a networking event, you and your is absolutely offensive and you should never do it under any circumstance. So turn the sales guy off, turn the networker on and go there and ask people questions, take notes, listen, and I'm gonna tell you something that you're gonna go, what? Huh? Right here. This is my opinion. When you go to a networking event, you, yes, you, I'm looking at both of my cameras in front of me, you have to earn the right to tell people what you do. Huh? When I go there, all I do is tell everybody what I do and talk about myself. No one cares about you or what you do. Nobody cares. So, yes, you heard me. Earn the right to tell people what you do. Try as hard as you can not to tell them. People say, hey, what do you do? They don't care. The only reason in a networking event, 99% of all people ask you what you do, there's one reason, so you can finish and they can tell you what they do. That's why they're asking. So you can stop talking and they can, the whole time you're talking, they go, when are they gonna be done? When are they gonna be done? I wanna tell them what I do, I wanna sell them my crap. So they say, you say, we're almost done guys. They say, you say. You go to a networking event, somebody walks up to you and says, what do you do? That's them, I say, Hey, Jessica, I talk about myself all day long. When I come to events like this, I want to meet great people like you and sell, see how I can help you build your business. What do you do? You wanted to tell me, I'm looking at Jessica, she's laughing. Um, because when people ask you what you do, they don't care. They, they want to tell you as soon as possible. So I say, I'm not even going to tell you. I, I'm here to meet great people like you, see how I can help you with your business. Why don't you tell me what you do first? And then they tell me and I listen and I take notes and I show that I care. So you never tell them what you do first, you tell them second, okay? That's a three hour class in, uh, that was in 23 seconds. That's three hours of training. That's my whole life in three seconds. All right, so almost done. Other ideas for networking success. No, literally, if I just slow down, because I do have a minute. 
at networking events, there's about 18 things that I teach. The first one is don't tell anybody what you do first. Okay, back to this. Things you can do to help build your network is you can offer to promote your referral partners and your other partners on Facebook and LinkedIn. You get a bio from them and promote them on your page and on your YouTube page if you have one. <clears throat> you can facilitate referral and power partner introductions. You can actually introduce referral partners to each other via email. You can interview them so you know exactly what a perfect client is for them. And then who do you know who, who can help this person you just met personally or professionally? If you start at now <clears throat> on this list, offer to promote them, introduce them to other people, interview them so you get to know them better. Uh, find other people you could introduce to them either personally or professionally. Where in there does it say go to an event, tell them what you do and sell them your stuff? It doesn't anywhere say that. Okay, that's all I got. Guys, before you kick me off, that's me. If you need more help with your networking, that's my personal cell phone number. You can text me. Please don't call. You can text me. You can email me. Thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Have fun tonight. Thank you. Bye. Rick, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all of your intel intelligence and insights. Uh, very helpful for everyone, I am sure.